G'day everybody, where's Wally here? How you going? Well, it seems that Adam failed miserably to find even one valid thing to debunk the Simon Dan Pete MK 50 minute ISS tour. Now, Adam tried to hang his hat on a two second clip of fingers gripping the metal edge of a docking seal. Anyway, I addressed that nonsense in my previous video. Needless to say, it was a huge fail by Adam. I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. Now, Adam immediately went on a damage control spree, attacking Dan and claiming victory. These people are crazy. Then it seems that he realised he hadn't debunked the ISS at all, so he trotted out some old favourites, the old scooper driver video, and he pointed to what he thought was air bubbles. Now, Adam, in his usual foreshadowing self, does what I've not seen too many others do. Now, Adam is a masterclass in priming. He tells his mindless drones what to expect, what to see, how to interpret at least six times before he gets around to showing the clip. First up, we've got an underwater festival. Bubble Fest. You can see in the area, I've sort of circled in the red. You're going to watch the astronaut make his way towards that area when we start watching the footage and just watch that area in question. Literally, a bubble fest is what we're about to see. Okay? And Adam never actually provides links or references for his sources. I wonder why. And it's all very condescending and patronising. Isn't it, Adam? I mean, old boy, that is a great fail. If you think you're doing such a great job, then have the courage to provide the references. We know why you won't, just in case your followers go and have a look for themselves. And they might see that you just are making stuff up. Hey, Adam. So those bubbles. Well, they are mighty strange bubbles, Adam. Look at this one, going in a very odd direction indeed. Now, a funny thing happened. I went looking for the original footage of the three spacewalks that um, Dave Williams went on in August 20. 07. And all I could find was a highlights reel and another derpy video claiming the same tosh as Adam. But in true form, Flatty's got a lie to flurf and they purposely ignored the commentary which is actually stating the cause of the bubbles. Dave Williams about to move out of the Quest airlock. Uh, those particles that you see emanating from uh, the airlock is uh, said by the EVA officer Paul Bame in Mission Control to be uh, particles of water from the crew's uh, sublimators on their spacesuits. Now, I never knew this, but I had addressed this whole bubble issue a few years back. Do you want to see where you went wrong, Adam? I don't even know what to do. Yeah, let's have a look. I mean, it always amazes me that Flatties constantly jump on the old bubbles in space to try and debunk the ISS and space and so forth, but they always fail to think about the much greater issues. So I've been waiting for Flatties to come up with this problem for a long time, yeah? Think of a spacesuit sitting in space. Okay, it's like sitting in a car, in a desert, in the middle of summer, with the AC off. And you've got the perfect insulator, the vacuum of space, wrapped all around you. So if you think back to your physics classes, not that any of you probably went to physics class, there's only three ways you can cool an object. Radiation, convection, conduction. And two of those are out of order because there is no air to do it. So all you've got is radiation. And it can't radiate the heat away from you as fast as the heat is coming in from that great big thermonuclear reaction over there we call the sun. So none of those are going to work. How are you going to cool this suit? Well, now that you realize you're going to roast in just a few minutes, how do you think the space suit stays cool? Well, the suit is white, so that helps it stop absorbing a little bit and helps it re-radiate a little bit as well. A spacesuit is called by a super simple piece of kit called a heat rejection porous plate sublimator. Got my mouth around that one. And this is exactly the same bit of kit that they used on the Apollo capsules and on the lunar landers and on the spacesuits that walked on the moon. Well, how does it work? I'm about to drop some knowledge on you. Well, think about a wet t-shirt for a second. And why is it that we know that this is cold? Yes, we can see it's cold. Okay, you got that thought? Well, evaporation. So the water phase changing from liquid to the vapor sucks up heat to do that phase change. Well, water sublimating, going from solid through liquid to vapor, sucks up even more. It's a double phase change. So what the suit has is a water loop. It runs all around the astronaut to their extremities all over their body to keep them cool. Then that warm water on the return side is then run through the heat rejection porous plate sublimator to cool it again. And what is this magic heat rejection porous plate sublimator, I hear you ask? Well, it's a plate of sintered metal. 
It allows the liquid water to pass through it. And it has the vacuum on the outside and the 5 psi of O2 pressure on the inside. So the water is pushed through this plate. The water's not sucked through the plate by the vacuum. Wake up to yourself. It's pushed through the plate by the pressure inside the suit. But once it hits the vacuum, it evaporates, it cools, it freezes, and it seals the plate. And of course, as some of that water disappears, more water flows in behind it, and it keeps the plate really, really cold. So on the inside of the heat-rejecting porous plate sublimator is a sheet of ice, and the water runs over that. Very simple, isn't it? So it keeps sublimating and keeps cooling the plate, the liquid then can be cooled on the inside and the metal conducts the heat to the ice and some of that ice sublimates and it stays sealed and any water passing through the plate freezes almost instantly but now when it's first turned on the plate is warm the water is warm and it passes easily through the plate it spits a bit of water over the inside of the airlock and this is the source of the bubbles that we often see flat is referring to during the initial stages of a spacewalk it's just water ice spitting out of the, wait for it, heat rejecting porous plate sublimator. So how good is that? How good a cooler is it? Well, it's about 2000 BTU. That's about 600 watts or similar to a very small room AC unit. And all that is just to cool one spacesuit. Quite easy, hey? Ready? Heat rejection porous plate water ice sublimators are tight. I don't even know what to do. Now, how about that scooper driver tank? You hear the name Dave Williams mentioned in the audio. Dave Williams only went to the ISS once in August 2007. Now, do you see that Dave did three spacewalks in six days? What were they doing with so much time outside? I've got very basic understanding, so you might have to bear with me. Was it that they were constructing the ISS, perhaps? And the video in question came from Dave's third spacewalk. So, to the derp. Well, Adam thinks, like many flatties, that there is a... Well, you know what, it's funnier if Adam tells it. Yeah, yeah, whatever, mate. Now, as if that wasn't bad enough, we're now going to forward the footage slightly, and we're going to see a tank of a diver inside this hatch. Okay? Bear with me. That's what you're going to see. Diver's tank there for all to see. Again, on this official footage, we've just had a bubble fest and now we've got a diver inside the space station on an official spacewalk. How obvious does this need to get? But that, I'm afraid to tell you, space fans, we can see there, that is a scooper diver's tank on the back of a scooper diver. So Adam thinks it's a scooper driver's tank. I can only assume Adam means scuba. Firstly, I want to mention that the two astronauts are always placed in the airlock head to toe. This is so that they can check out each other's life support systems during the decompression stage of the airlocking. That means that one astronaut exits head first and the other feet first. The second point that you'll want to know is that one suit has a red stripe around the thigh and across the backpack. This is so that ground control can tell who is who. So the scuba tank appears after the first astronaut exited head first, which means the second guy is trying to get out feet first. And what we see is not a scuba tank at all, but the red striped suit guy's thigh. Note how there is no regulator on top of the scuba tank. And note how that the size of the red guy's thigh is the same as the tank. Also note that the thickness of the stripe on the tank matches the thickness of the marking on the thigh. So the exiting red striped guy is bending his leg at the knee, so now we, all we see is his thigh and the stripe, but not his lower leg. Ooh, that was rather easy. Oopsies, Adam. Now that has to be embarrassing. Bubbles are not bubbles, but water ice. Scuba tanks are not scuba tanks, but astronauts' thighs. Thanks, guys. This was fun. It's so much fun debunking poor old Adam that I have a few more in the works. Gonna love them, Adam. You know you will. Thanks guys, click like and subscribe, and don't miss out for the next instalment of Adam Does Something Dopey.
sua aí. Okay, Kenny, finally the moment of truth. I can show you what I've been working on. Check it out. Oh, shouldn't have heard that noise. Hey, we'll fix.